Welcome to my channel. Today we're diving into the world of essential oils. These aromatic liquids are derived from plants capturing the essence or essential part of the plant's scent. They're used for a variety of purposes from aromatherapy and skin care to household cleaning and natural medicine. Now there are several ways to extract these oils, but the most common methods include steam distillation and cold pressing. Steam distillation involves heating the plant material to create steam, which then collects the oil as it rises. On the other hand, cold pressing, as the name suggests, mechanically presses the oils out of the plant. Each method has its own benefits, depending on the type of plant and the desired use of the oil. Now that we understand what essential oils are and their benefits, it's time to roll up our sleeves and get into the DIY side of things. First off, we need the right plant material. Let's explore how to harvest and prepare herbs for essential oil extraction. When it comes to sourcing fresh herbs, consider growing your own or buying from a local farmer's market. This way, you're assured of the quality and freshness. The best time to harvest herbs is in the morning, after dew has evaporated but before the sun is too hot. This is when the plant's essential oils are at their peak. To prepare your herbs, Give them a gentle rinse to remove any dirt or bugs, then pat them dry. If you're using leafy herbs, remove the leaves from the stems. For flowers, separate the petals. Hardier herbs like rosemary can be used whole. Chop or crush your herbs to release their oils, but avoid turning them into a pulp. This could make the extraction process messy and less efficient. With our herbs ready, we can now move on to the extraction process. Steam distillation is one of the most popular methods for extracting essential oils. Let's break down how it works. Imagine a simple setup, a pot, a condenser, and a separator. The pot is where we place our plant material, be it lavender, rosemary, or any other botanical you fancy. Next, we pour in water, just enough to submerge the plant material. This mixture is then brought to a gentle boil. As the water heats, it turns into steam, carrying with it the volatile oils from our plant material. This steam, laden with aromatic compounds, rises and moves into the condenser. Here the steam cools down and condenses back into a liquid. This liquid, a mix of water and essential oil, then flows into the separator. But how do we separate the oil from the water? Well, essential oils are generally lighter than water and will float to the top. Our separator, also known as a Florentine flask, makes this process easier. It's designed to collect the essential oil at the top while allowing the water to be drained from the bottom. Once the water is drained, what remains is pure, concentrated essential oil. But remember, the extraction process doesn't end here. It's crucial to filter this oil to remove any remaining plant particles. A simple coffee filter or cheesecloth will do the trick. Steam distillation is a fantastic method because it's relatively simple and doesn't require complex machinery. Plus, it's quite efficient especially for plants that are high in essential oils. However, it's worth noting that this method does involve heat, which can alter or destroy some sensitive compounds. Aside from steam distillation, there are other methods like cold press extraction and solar infusion. Cold press extraction, as the name suggests, involves applying cold pressure to extract oil from fruits like oranges, lemons, and grapefruits. This technique is popular because it retains the pure aroma and essence of the fruit. To put it simply, the fruit is placed in a device that applies pressure, causing the rind to break and release the essential oil. It's a straightforward process, but it requires a good deal of fruit to produce a small amount of oil. That's why this method is commonly used for citrus fruits, which are rich in oil and relatively inexpensive. Now, let's switch gears and talk about the solar infusion technique. This method is more of a slow and steady race. It's perfect for those who prefer a more laid-back, hands-off approach. In the solar infusion technique, herbs are placed in a jar with a carrier oil, such as olive or sweet almond oil. The jar is then left in a sunny spot for several weeks. During this time, the sun's heat allows the aromatic compounds in the herbs to infuse into the oil. The beauty of this method is its simplicity. It requires no special equipment, just patience and a sunny spot. However, it's worth noting that the resulting oil is not as concentrated as those obtained through distillation or cold press extraction. 
These are just two of the many methods you can use to create your own essential oils at home. Each method has its own strengths, and the best one for you depends on your resources, patience, and the type of botanicals you're working with. Remember, making essential oils is not just about the end product. It's also about the journey of discovery, the joy of creation, and the satisfaction of using something you've made with your own two hands. Now that we have our essential oils, let's talk about how to blend them for different purposes. Blending essential oils allows you to customize your aromatherapy experience. Let's see how it's done. When creating your own aromatic blends, it's important to understand the three categories of essential oil notes, top, middle, and base. Top notes are the first sense you smell. They're light and evaporate quickly. Middle notes form the heart of your blend and are usually warm and balanced. Base notes develop over time, providing depth and solidity to your blend. Creating a balanced blend is like composing a symphony. You need the light, fleeting notes of citrus oils like lemon or grapefruit, the warm, comforting notes of floral oils like lavender or chamomile, and the deep, grounding notes of woody oils like sandalwood or cedarwood. To blend, simply start with a base oil, add your middle note oils, and finish with your top note oils. Experiment with different ratios until you find a composition that suits your senses. Remember safety first, always dilute essential oils before use. Quality control and proper storage are key to maintaining the potency of your homemade essential oils. To ensure quality, always use fresh, healthy plant materials and clean, sterilized equipment. Once your essential oils are ready, store them in dark glass bottles to protect them from light, which can degrade their therapeutic properties. A cool, dry place away from heat and sunlight is the best storage option. Now, let's talk about the fun part. Using your homemade essential oils, the possibilities are virtually endless. You could add a few drops to skincare products for a personalized touch. Try creating your own aromatherapy blends for relaxation or rejuvenation. Or you could even incorporate them into homemade cleaning solutions for a natural fragrant touch. That concludes our DIY essential oil guide. Remember, practice makes perfect, happy oil making.